Hi there, Starscream here. Well, this is something I wanted to do for a long time, is to review some elements of Beast Wars. Uh, the characters in particular, uh, but not all of them. I'm only going to focus on the pilot episode, because it'll be two episodes of season one. Now, I have been accused, occasionally, of being a G1 snob, which is simply not the case. Um, the original Transformers were basically just a commercial to sell toys. You see, the lineup in Beast Wars wasn't particularly large, so, you know, they were never going to sell that many toys in terms of introducing them, because they were trying to focus more on the characters in a more adult show than the G1. Having said that, they still had their slapstick elements, and they had their in-jokes, referring back to G1. It was an absolutely brilliant show. I, I didn't appreciate it the first time it was aired. I was uh, um, sceptical of it, and I was, to be honest with you, I was past Transformers at that point. I was too old. Um, I've been through the Ninja Turtle phase, and I just basically didn't really care about toys anymore. I was thinking more about cars and girls and, you know, the usual kind of stuff. But as I got older, uh, I started to appreciate it more and more and realise how well written it was. And the voice acting in it is second to none. So, we are going to focus on the characters first and foremost. The individuals, because they have characters unlike a lot of the G1 Transformers. Yes, as I said, I'm not a G1 snob. And then we are going to focus on the Twin Park Pilot episode. So, without further ado, let's crack on and let's get going. Okay, so off the bat we have Cheetor. He's the young, Im impetuous, mm, slightly vain, but loyal character from first city. Then we have Optimus Primal. And yes, I said Optimus Primal and not Optimus Primal. And he's very G1 in his approach to things. He's level-headed and he's the guy you can rely on. Then we have Rat Trap. Mm, initially I didn't like him, but he kind of grows on you after a while. Yeah, he's got a slightly annoying voice, like that all the time. And he looks and sounds like he should be in Goodfellas. And he is a rat after all. But um, he grows on you after a while and you realise that coming to the end of the season, what a decent chap he actually genuinely was. Then we have Rhinox. Now Rhinox is one of the big heavy hitters. He's also Optimus Primal's right hand man. He reminds me a little bit of Ironhide, other than the fact he's not an idiot like Ironhide. He does most of their technical stuff and he helps out in that element. But unlike Ironhide, he has a dark side, which isn't fully developed in Beast Wars, but in Beast Machines you find out that yes, he can be quite a dark character. But for the benefit of starting him off in this in the season, no. No, he's just Rhinox. So, that's the Maximals taken care of, as for Season 1, as you can see in the picture, there will be a lot more, there's more characters introduced to the Maximals, not all sort about bots, remember. So, now we need to get on to the Predacons, not the Decepticons, the Predacons. Right, first things first, let's talk about Megatron. Now, Megatron is still the same name as the G1 character, so they haven't fiddled around with the name. And, to be honest with you, he's pretty much like Megatron. He's not like Galvatron or any other incarnations. He is very much Megatron. And he goes into a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which I think is pretty damn cool. Um, he's got the same problem that G1 Megatron has, though. He tends to retreat a lot. But there you go. We have a Megatron, and he's got the original name. He has no... He's not related to the G1 Megatron in any sort of way. He just carries the namesake. So, on to the next Predacon. Now, we've got a real sadistic uh, Predacon for you here. He's a sadist, masochist scientist. Yeah, I know, it's not something you'll get usually together, is it? He has no real loyalty to the Predacon cause. All he cares about is what he wants, and his name is Tarantulas. Now, initially when he starts off, you think, yeah, he's really on the side of the Predacon, but... As things go on, you realise that he's only in it for his own ends and what you can get out of it. He really doesn't care about the cause. He just cares about what he wants. 
Now we come to Dinobot, not the most original of names, but at least Hasbro didn't lose the rights to it. Um, so we find out that I initially thought that Dinobot was going to be a Starscream wannabe. He can usurp Megatron, uh, take over command of the Predacons, and have his own way. Uh, no, he's more like a Klingon. He is loyal, but only to a certain extent, because he has his honour. And when he feels his honour has been jeopardised, then he'll move away from whoever he's with. And he quite clearly sees that Megatron has no honour. So he challenges him, but we'll get into that later. But Dinobot, yes, he is a great character, and one that I completely misunderstood to start with. Now we have Scorponok. Scorponok is like the, the, the heavy hitter of the Predacons. Uh, he's not particularly bright, he's completely loyal to Megatron, doesn't really ask too many questions. Don't get him confused with G1 Scorponok, the headmaster. They have nothing in common other than the name. But yeah, he's, he's a pretty boring character, so not much to say about him really. Now we have Pterosaur. Now Pterosaur is the entertaining one because initially he starts off as you think he's quite loyal. Actually, Pterosaur is the star scream of Beast Wars. He actually takes Megatron out, he gets supercharged. It's one of the episodes later, I'm not going to do any spoilers or anything, but later on he, he gets empowered and he takes on Megatron, he wants to become leader of the Predacons. It's a very good episode, but yeah, Pterosaur is a, quite an interesting character. You have to keep your eye on him, he doesn't seem that important to begin with, but believe me, he is. And now we come to the runner-up of the prize when getting brain cells. Yes, it's Wazbenita. Wazbenita always talks about himself in the first perspective, so I, I say with something like, Hmm, Wazbenita like this. Was Benita fly? Was Benita terrorize? He tells everybody what he's going to do before he's even done it. He's an absolute moron. He ends up getting blown up quite a few times as well and then putting himself back together. He is an entertaining character. He has got a character, that's the main thing. But uh, other than that, yeah. He gets... No, I'm not going to tell you any more. We'll save that for another day. Now, my dear friends, that's the Predacons taken care of, and the Maximals. Now, we should get in for the first pilot two-episode part. And if you haven't ever seen it, I can highly recommend it, but we're going to go for it. Not too much in-depth, but it's just to give you an idea of how blooming good this show is. Right, straight into the pilot episode now. Oh, episodes, I should say. Uh, the Maximals are trying to get, well, gain more energy on, and they're being pursued by the Predacons. And they use the Maximal ship as basically a shield for them while they go for an asteroid field. They get stuck together, and they lose control of their ships, and they crash. Now, they crash on a planet that is rich in energy on, but they don't actually know what time period they're in, because they think they've travelled through time, but they're not entirely certain, and they're not entirely certain they're on the planet they even wanted to be on. But since it has energy on it, and they can't obviously take off again because their ships are in such a bad state of repair they decide to try and make the most of it now just like arrival from cybertron there's one of these little funny little bug bot things i'll call it because i don't know what it's called uh, it goes around scanning the indigenous life forms so but obviously there's going to be no trucks cars airplanes or anything else but it's going to be uh, apes dinosaurs uh, monkeys spiders wasps uh, you name it, anything that's indigenous, it transpires, it copies it over to them, so that gives them their alt mode. Now, the problem being, while they're on this planet, is it has such a high degree of energy on, that other than the fact that they're when they're in their beast modes, which, are slight, which are basically is an organic shell, it's almost like a pretender, I suppose, in terms of that, they can't stay in their robot mode for very long, because it overloads their circuitry. Later on in the show, we find that they become transmetals, but that's, that's a story for another day. So for the time being, they can't stay in robot mode for very long. They have to stay in their all beast modes, and they're aware of that, both the Predacons and the Maximals. Now, this is the part where the Predacons suddenly become interesting, because Dinobot comes out to Megatron, and he go, calls Megatron, you're an idiot. We're meant to be somewhere, and you, you basically muddled it up. You've let us all down, and I think I should be leader of the Predacons. And Megatron goes, well, yes, but no. Scorponok, 
and Scorponok just blasts Dinobot off. And that's the end of Dinobot for the time being. No, he's not dead or anything, but um, that's the last time he really works with the Predacons up until a later season. But uh, that's, a, that's a story for another day. There's there's so much that goes on in this show that, as I said, I'm not really going to do it justice in just two episode part. But I'm just trying to give you an incentive to watch it, that's all. But yeah, so Dinobot has basically left the Predacons. I should stop saying basically, by the way. I will try and find a new word. Now, Cheetah, being the um, young, enthusiastic one, goes off on a run because he's enjoying his beast mode, essentially. But unfortunately, he encounters one of the Predacons, and he goes into his robot mode. Now, he, it, being impetuous, is not entirely sure of how long he has to be remaining in robot mode. But, to be honest with you, because it's Cheetor, he really doesn't care. So he engages the Predacon straight away, which is Wasbonator, and Wasbonator is a pain in the arse. Now, it's at this junction that the rest of the Predacons turn up, and the Maximals turn up. Now, it's going to be a fight. And they both know, is well, the intelligence ones do, that they can't stay in robot mode for very long, but they know that really to engage in battle properly, they're going to have to transform and it's going to be well they don't entirely know how long they can fight in robot mode so they're going to have to find out Cheetor's gun's jammed and he's going to go into stasis locking it anyway if he's not careful and Megatron is just more than happy to oblige the Maximals in a one-on-one -on -one fight and he outnumbers them anyway yes now it's at this point Cheetor does something really stupid he takes a cheap shot at Megatron and now Megatron is really pissed off. Now, maybe Megatron might have w worked things out. You know, no Megatron, possibly, but it wouldn't for his own benefit. But now he's really hacked off. So, essentially, Cheetor has started off the war again between the Predacons and the Maximals. Now, they have a conversation about it with Optimus Primal saying, look, we've been at peace for years, but Megatron goes, well, no, we were just biding our time. And now the time has come. And they all go into their beast mode, and they have a big brawl for it. When I say a big brawl, there isn't that many of them. But yeah, they're quite aggressive, and they're all quite pissed off with each other. So, they go for it. I'm not really rooting for anybody at this point in time, because I both think they're as bad as each other, but there you go. So, the Maximals and the Predacons go at it. They all go into their robot mode, and they have at it. But the, the problem being is that nobody seems to make any ground on each other. And then eventually they, they start to go into stasis lock because they're in robot mode, it doesn't last very long, and they basically retreat from each other. So nothing is really gained. Right, so after this initial encounter, as you can see, they're all starting to go into stasis lock, and there's nothing they can do. They don't want to engage each other in beast mode, so they decide the best thing to do is a strategic retreat. Now, it's as they're on their way back, they suddenly realise that they were missing one of the Predacons. They counted them, but there was one, well, one short, and they're concerned about where, where the other one was. Well, we're about to find out. They encounter Dinobot, and he comes to Optimus Prime and says, Well, I don't want to be with the Predacons anymore, so I'd like to join the Maximals, but I want to be leader of the Maximals. So I challenge you to a fight. A fight, and if you lose, I'll destroy you. Are you up for it, Optimus Primal? Now, this is the end of the first episode. So now, we're going to get on to the next one. Well, welcome to part two. Now, Dinobot and Optimus Primal go at it. But the Predacons intercede and start trying to ambush them. So, they... Maximals think that Optimus Primal has fallen to his death and they just don't know what to do. But, this is only the second episode now, Optimus Primal has not fallen to his death, he's just hanging on there. So that's why he stayed in beast mode, because he knew that um, it would start to overcharge his electrics and he would probably just go into stasis lock. So, Dinobot didn't know, he's still in robot mode and he starts to have a, well, that's what's the best way I can put it, he starts to go into stasis lock, but he can't transform while Optimus Prime was holding him. So, eventually, it it works out that Rhinox saves him. 
he's getting a bit ticked off and rat trap moaning about everything but as you can see Dinobot's going into stasis lock can't transform he's going to shut down but Rhinox saves the day and he pulls Optimus Primal and Dinobot up uh, Optimus Primal says to Rat Trap, don't just keep whining, Dinobot's going to be one of the Maximals now, like it or lump it, okay? Meanwhile, Megatron is getting really ticked off because he wants the Energon, and Scorponok goes, look, look, Megatron, there it is. It's ours for the taking, there, look, raw Energon. And Megatron goes, yes, we'll get it before the Maximals do. Right, let's get back into beast mode. Oh, frustration. But uh, Optimus Primal has realised what the Predacons are up to. And he said they can't get their hands on all that energy on. Because if they do, they're going to be unstoppable. So we need to make a move and we need to make it now. And they all agree. And they rain it and then all of the Predacons are off in that direction. So you know what the Maximals are going to do? They're going to have another battle. So this turns into the last battle of the episode, uh, of the pilot episode I should say. So you get Wasbonato and Pterosaur coming in against the Maximals. And obviously they've got a Vendetta against Dinobot as well, so that's not going to help. But they transform, obviously they can only stay for a limited time, especially because considering they're so close to the Energon. But Prime knows that, but they've got to take their chances because they can't really defend themselves in beast mode. So, they go for it. So now it comes to a face-off between the Maximals and the Predacons. And they are going to have to stay in beast mode because they are so close to the Energon now. And Optimus Primal isn't going to get down and neither is Megatron. So they are just going to go at it and see who wins. One will stand. One will fall. So, primarily, Optimus Primal and Megatron have a fight. Megatron gets his head stuck in a rock, which I thought, to be honest with you, was quite hilarious. <laughs> you can't get his head out. And you remember, you can't go back into robot mode, so he's only got these tiny little pathetic hands as a T-Rex. But it doesn't stop him from trying to have another go at uh, Optimus Primal. But the reality of the situation is nobody's going to win this one this time. And that eventually, it just... They go over and over and over again, and eventually Optimus Primal gets the better of Megatron. Now eventually Megatron gets so pissed off, even though he knows what's going to happen, he still goes into robot mode because he's tired of not having proper arms and legs. And he doesn't care that he's so close to the Energon. And he knows the internal damage he's gone, but he just wants to have one last go. And Dinobot jumps in and saves the day. And I'll tell you why he did it, because Optimus Primal saved him, and he wanted to return the compliment. He doesn't like to be in somebody's debt. But unfortunately, in the process, it sets off the Energon. A huge chain reaction, and they suddenly realise, we've got to get out of here. Regardless of how much we want the Energon, this is going to be our deaths if we don't get out. And Megatron just lies on the floor there, going into stasis lock, because he went into robot mode and he shouldn't have. But he knew that but he was so stubborn and arrogant that he thought it might work in his favour but it didn't but don't worry it's not the end of Megatron and it's not the end of Beast Wars as I said this is only the second episode so they destroy all the Energon in that particular region but believe me there's a lot more where that came from and you'll be seeing Megatron again and you'll be seeing the Maximals again in the actual fact you'll be seeing all of them again as the series progresses and so in retrospect, I've got to say to you, my friends, what an absolutely brilliant show. I misjudged completely at the start. Now, Dinobot is part of the Maximals. This has been my introduction to people who have never seen Beast Wars. And I hope, if you haven't seen it, this will entice you to see it. Or at least give it a watch and see what you think. And if you liked this episode and you would like to see more of my reviews of Beast Wars I'm more than happy to oblige YouTube have been taking a lot of my videos down recently which is a bit of a pain in the uh, proverbial rear end but um, if I get enough people interested or people that subscribe to me 
very nice and I can continue to do this and we can have a bit of fun with it and so for the meantime I say take care guys see you a lot out there sorry one thing I forgot to mention which I, sh I overlooked and I've just suddenly remembered is at the beginning when they crashed their ships the Maximals have a lot of protoforms on board the ship which haven't been activated yet so it's like a, a spark which hasn't got a, really a body but it's, it's waiting to find its identity now what they do, the, the Maximals, is they eject them onto the planet uh, to safeguard them now it can either be a Maximal or a Predacon so this is why it starts to bulk up the numbers later on in the seasons to come and you'll see that some of the some of them become Predacons and some of them become Maximals but that's a story for another day but yes I should have mentioned that first and now I can say take care guys and see you lots out there